difficult situations in Jesus name I do not know what some of you are facing right now and I do not know what you are encountering but I do want you to know and understand one thing that God is good despite what's happening don't get it twisted in your mind because in these times people ask questions those who used to ch come to church are no longer coming to church they'll tell you if God is so good why did he allow this stupid virus if God is so good why he allow this and that and this and that don't join that company God is good despite what's happening Amen, because his being uh, is more important than what he does for you. So we don't serve God for what he does. Amen. That's secondary. We serve God for who he is. Amen. Who he is is more important than what he does for you. Amen. Because the truth is, over six or seven billion people in the whole world, we all are after his grace of our lives. But the truth is, he's faithfully keeping us all together. Amen. And sometimes we all pray for open doors in life. And that's good. Huh? Lord, I want you to open up these doors. But then God says, now, if I open this door, this season of your life, you will curse me in the month of April. So I'll keep it closed. Yeah. <laughs> I know that for sure because the Bible talks about Hannah and Penina. You know the story? It's, it's, it's one of those stories that you, you look at it and you are left with a lot of questions. Penina was popping kids. One year, every kid was coming out, ten of them. Then they are both married to one man, Elkanah. But Hannah was barren. And one of those verses were pastors. We try to spiritualize it and come to, in Hebrew and in Greek, it does not actually mean that, I'll tell you what, it's simple. The Bible says, God had shut up the womb of Hannah. Yeah. What do you do? If the door you want to open, the one who has closed it, is the one you say, Lord, I love you. I can understand it when the devil closes the door. But if it is God who closes the door, then where do you go? So, I do believe that uh, when you come to the end of the year, it's a time to reflect. It's a time to think from January to December. It's a time when people like to make resolutions. It's a time when people say, I want 2021 to be the best year for me. Let me help you. Let's join uh, with uh, some of the characters that are in the Bible as a way of encouraging you. And I have titled this message, Running with the Giants of Christmas. Because the very first Christmas was not as nice as it is today. I'm sure you agree with me that the very first Christmas, there were no Christmas lights on houses. The very first Christmas, they were not rejoicing. Actually, the sight and the very uh, introduction of the very first Christmas was sad and sorrowful, painful for others. So I was thinking about that and I thought uh, uh, John Maxwell has written a book about running with the giants. Always like to make sure that I remain credible for that because somebody would say you are copying John Maxwell. You can. But it's important for you to understand when you wrote that book, Running with the Giants, I take in that title because I believe it's important as we end 2020. Because Hebrews chapter 12, it says a statement that I want to use as my foundation text. Let's see what it says. Hebrews chapter 12, and I want us to see from verse 1. It says a statement that is very, very important that I want us to get. I'm going to give you two scriptures today, and we'll see what we want. I'm, I'll be reading from Hebrews, then I'll read and finalize in the book of Luke. The few things that I want us to see. But in Hebrews chapter 12, I want us to see something that is happening there according to the word of God. In Hebrews 12 from verse 1, listen to what the Bible says. And I want us all of us to read it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. This is supposed to encourage all of us. I want us to read all of us with the vivaciousness and the gumption of destiny empowered Christian church. One, two, go. Therefore, we also, since... And, snares, and let us run. I believe that's what God is saying today. I believe strongly that's what God is saying today. That you have reached the month of December. 
And he says, the only cue that will strengthen you and give you a fortitude to continue to 2021, look back and let's find out what the other runners are saying. Because the truth is, you are not the first and the last. There are those that have gone before you. Yeah. They were human like you. They used the toilet like you. They used to eat their food like you. They used to smile like you. And I'm sure they were grumpy like you often. They would go through the mood swings like you. And they would annoy one another with spouses like you. So I wanted to understand there are people that have run the race in front of us. But let's therefore go back and see what would they say if they were to come and preach to us, to us that have suffered the pandemic of 2020. Now I start with Noah. If Noah was to be here, I'm pretty sure you agree with me. Noah would say, good morning, Destiny. I'm a great Noah. Hi, Noah. Hi. Hi. In fact, my story was very tragic and very difficult because at the time when God of Abraham asked me to build an ark, it was bizarre because I did not even have a clue how it looked like. God gave me the measurements and the specifications how to build this thing, whether you want to call it a boat or an ark or a house or whatever you'd call it. But then he says, build it. And to add so to the injury, I was 600 years. Mm. I know. So, really, by this time, uh, you'll be thinking, oh, gee, gosh, I thought I was too old. So, no, I'll be saying, now, nah. I was 600 years of age when he called me to do it. And the truth about the issue is, I did not have support. So Noah, Noah would then go on to say, if there is only one thing I want to say to you, the survivors of the pandemic in 2020 as you face 2021 is one statement. Here's what Noah would say. One man with God can make a difference. Amen. Give a big hand to Noah. Unless we think that Noah is finished, unless we think that Noah is finished, then Moses will say, I've got a testimony. <laughs> okay. Come on, Moses. Good morning, Destiny. <laughs> Do you know what it is like to lead three million slaves in a desert? It was hard. It was difficult. And for that matter, God blamed it on me. It was not even my issue. We arrived at a place called Masa Meribah. And they're all crying after me. Hey, Moses, why did you take us out of Egypt? We want to go back. Were there no graves in Egypt up until I got so angry? It wasn't my fault. It was them. And when God says, speak to the rock, I hit the rock. You can understand my situation. But then God said, because of that, you, Moses, you see the land. But you won't get into it. That sounds unfair. Moses will say, but nevertheless, oftentimes what seems to be like failures Failures does not make you a failure in life. Because when you fail, that does not mean you are a failure. Yeah. Amen. One area of your life does not determine your destiny. Yeah. I'm in glory with the heroes. Because one mistake did not define who I was. Yes. Talk to me. Yes. Give a big to Moses as he goes. But I would think... A lady would come forth, and her name would be Esther. Somebody shout Esther. Esther. I've got an Esther in this place. I've got an Esther house, but I've got an Esther as well in this church. Hi, Good morning, Destiny. Good morning, Esther. <laughs> Mine is a very short testimony. All I can tell you is, <laughs> I did not have a mother. 
I was raised by my uncle. We arrived in this place when we were now bound in Persia. And one day, the notice board was full all over around the city. And they were saying, looking for beauty contesters. My uncle, can you believe? My uncle then had a suggestion. And she said, come on, Esther. You can go and join the contesters of the Persian girls. Can you imagine? I'm a Jew. And he says, go and join the Persian girls. I thought about it. I thought about it. I prayed about it. Look, sounds like you now. I prayed about it. And I kind of felt the Lord was saying, no. <laughs> Christians, well, they want to run away from things. But anyway, the pressure that came from my uncle pressured me. And I thought, okay, I will try and do it. And uh, the day came. All the beautiful Persian girls were walking. Mm, 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 mm. I've never done a contest, so I, 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 I watched it. Woo! Woo! It's all done for the king. And the king was King Aesaras. I can see him slapping his gums and looking at these beauty pageants. They're walking by, and he says, Go. Next! The other one coming again. Next, the other one coming again. Next, then it was my turn. My heart was beating fast. Somebody said, come on, Esther. Come on, Esther. As it was my turn. Maybe. Maybe. Somebody shout, come on, Esther. We need to agree. Immediately after this service, make sure you go and just go to Shelly and say, oh, that was nice, that was nice, because otherwise I'm in trouble. I stole some of these things. So, so, so. Esther says, it was my turn. I started walking. I wanted to look at that Jewish girl. Walking, not alone, but with God. Because with God, minority equals majority. Talk to me. Amen. And as I was walking there, walking there, walking there, I could tell. Because the king said, slow down. Slow her down. Slow down. Slow down. And she said, who is that girl there? And they said, that's Esther, Hadassah, which means the orphaned one. And said, the king said, bring her in. Little did I know that day what started with my uncle Mordecai was going to give me an opportunity for a lifetime to replace a queen who had been removed and I was going to become a new queen. So destiny, I do not know what you have been through in 2020. But as Esther, I'll be saying to you, at this stage, even though the odds are against you, your identity is not defined by people, by race, by culture, what you have, what you don't have. I was an orphan. Despite that, I was chosen to be the next queen. Amen. So what is your issue? As she goes by, I'm sure your wig now is hot. And then we see something very, very interesting. Because if Elijah was to come to focus, Elijah would say, mine was very spectacular and very confusing at the same time. Because one day I was at the Mount Carmel. Over 750 prophets of Baal. They wanted to show whose God is God. Can you imagine? While I am up there on the mountain, Oh, the prophets of Baal. And they are saying, today is going to be a showdown. We want to see whose God is God. And I say to them, you go first. You know, whenever you trust your weapons, you are never in a rush. You go first. 
the prophets of Baal started crying and cutting themselves and crying. And Elijah even goes to them and he says, oh, keep on praying louder. Maybe he's in the bathroom. He was cheeky. Keep on crying out louder. Maybe your God is asleep. After they finished crying and cutting themselves, the Bible says there was no answer for them. But Elijah comes up. Elijah calls to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know the rest of the story. After gallons and gallons of water were poured on the altar, and then the God who answers by fire came and consumed the water and the altar, and everything was miraculous on that day. Now, but this time, destiny, you need to understand how am I feeling? Because after every miracle, after every success, after every achievement, after every breakthrough, after every miracle, we all feel, oh, God is good. Don't, don't, don't tell me anything. I've got a testimony. Oh. Hey, God is good. You know what? Just been promoted. You know what? I just got a raise. You know what? Everything is just going well. Oh, you know, I'm just getting favor, favor everywhere. Favor, favor everywhere. But little did I know that after that miracle, it will upset one woman. We all know her in the New Testament. Jezebel. Because behind every Elijah, there is a Jezebel. I'm not talking about your wife. I'm not talking about your husband. In your spiritual journey, beware of a Jezebel spirit. Because the Jezebel spirit manipulates, does what? Manipulate. Controls, does what? Control. So whenever there is a Jezebelic spirit, it is that spirit that tells you, bring confusion in your life because it wants to manipulate, it exploits, it controls, it wants to have the final say. Even though you have said God has the final say, a Jezebelic spirit always has a voice. After the miracles, after I saw God come down, the voice of Jezebel said, you did this to me? You, all my prophets, I will tell you, I will follow you until I kill you. The Bible tells us, he started running away from a woman who was not even where he was. And the Bible says when he ran, he ran so much until he got tired and now he sits by the cave. And then what started was as being just tired. There is confusion. It builds up in your mind because depression does not start as depression. One thought after the other, negativity coming after the other, and then the devil begins now to show you where you are coming from, and he's so calculative that he shows you all the negative stuff. Build a case with the negativity around you, and then he was depressed. A prophet of God, who has just done a showdown on the mountain, a prophet of God, who has seen fire in the presence of God, that prophet is now down, depressed, discouraged, disappointed. Where is God when this is happening? So if he was here, he would say to you and I, even prophets can be depressed. I know what they have told you. They have told you that if you are spiritual, everything should go smooth. But I've got news for you. The higher you go, the rougher it becomes. I love that. Because every level introduces new devils. Did you hear? Lord, I want you to use me. And God says, fine, I'm going to start with you. One thing that you need to know about God, before he changes things, he changes you. Hmm? I know what you are after. God, move this mountain. God, do this in my family. God, move this. But God says, uh, can I have a vessel to use? Not your wife. I want you. 
Let's see how you fare on this one. It is important for you to understand. But I thought therefore this morning, if I lead you to my second text and release you, what was the first Christmas like for these three people that I wanted to see? The first one I want to talk about is in Luke chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 5 to verse 7. Probably just zero it in in order to verse 7. And let's see what it says. Luke 1 and verse 7. And let's see the first Christmas story. How it was like for this beautiful woman. And we know her name. Her name is Elizabeth. Somebody shout Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Shout with me. Shout Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Let's read together. One, two, go. But they had no child. Now, I want you to see that because that's a very important verse that I wanted to catch in verse 7 there. It says, they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. You are with me? So go back to verse 5. You know, let's see now what it says. Let's read all of us together. I want to go. There was in the days of Herod the king a certain priest mm-hmm, of the division his wife, and they were both. I wanted to stop there. That verse there. That verse there. They were both. Before who? So you can tell they were not religious. They were righteous before God. You're with me? And the Bible goes on to say, they were walking in what? All the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. Blameless. That goes against the theology that is taught today. That if you are a Christian and you are going, things are going pear-shaped in your life, that must be because of sin. Because they were both righteous. They were walking in all the commandments. And the ordinances of the Lord blameless. So if Elizabeth was to rock up today, she would come up here and say, Good morning, Destiny. Let's try it again. <laughs> morning, Destiny. Morning, Elizabeth. Now call me by my short name. Say, Good morning, Lizzie. <laughs> morning, Destiny. She would say, as far as I know, my husband was a pastor because it says he was a priest. So I was coming from the pastor's family. But being raised in that family and I was the wife to this important man because he would would make 10. Zechariah was one of the priests that was only allowed to get into the temple for sacrifices. So I wanted to understand that when it says they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, they were blameless. But the Bible says in verse 7, she was barren. What do you do when loving God, serving him, walking purely before him doesn't seem to be paying? She's barren. But in a barrenness, she will be able to say to you and I today that destiny, even though your miracle is not yet, don't confuse God's knows with God's not yet. Let's try it again. Because when you pray to God, God can say no. God can say, not this time. God can say, yes. Or God can say, wait. But it's important for you and I to understand that in all those situations, every problem that you are encountering, every situation that you are facing right now, God answers prayer. And because God answers prayer, could it be for the survivors of the pandemic in 2020, as we get into Christmas, 
God is wanting to say to you, look beyond the Christmas lights and look beyond the Christmas tree and look beyond the gifts, look beyond the cards you receive, you will not receive. Uh, look beyond all the food and all the delicacies and the pleasantries. God says, look beyond that. And I want you to think about Elizabeth, what Elizabeth would say to us. And I believe Elizabeth will say to us today, choose to trust God, even though there seems to be no fruit in your life. And I know that for sure because she chose to trust God even though the odds were against her. I want to say to you, as we are closing up the year 2020, there are many things you could have loved to see happen in your relationships. There are many things that you would love to see God do over your children. There are a lot of things that we would love to see uh, operating in your body. You go to the doctor and uh, you, something that you had never dreamt about. And the doctor tells you the report that you don't want to hear. I'm here to say to you right now, never give up on yourself. Because Elizabeth teaches me that sometimes it's withhold from me. And God knows why. Because if you understand that God is a God of time, timing, and seasons, you will understand why he closes certain things for you. Because if he closed the womb of Elizabeth, it now makes me understand and to see that John was not supposed to be born before time. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. So that had John come earlier, he would not be able to become the forerunner for Jesus Christ. So because God's purposes are higher than your wants. Yeah. You hear me? Because God's purposes are higher than what you think you need. Oh, God, I need this. Uh, come on, God, if you don't come for me at this time, listen, I'm not going to read the Bible. Uh, Christians say some, some silly things, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, what? I can't say that to God. I can't, you know that? I can't. If I start giving God those alternatives, I can tell you what, I will suffer. But then sometimes you know, I told God that this year, if I don't get married this year, Lord, if I don't get married this year, if I don't get a guy this year, and I don't, I don't get the, the love of my life this year, Lord, that's it, that's it. And I'm thinking, you were telling God that? I'm thinking, gee, gosh, I love your God. <laughs> but you see, it teaches me that sometimes he says, wait. He keeps dangling the keys. Keep on praying. Oh, but God, oh, you don't understand. I don't even understand. God said, ah, ah, come, 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 come closer to me. Ah, but Lord, you don't understand my cousin. My aunt is there all talking about me. <laughs> because you've got to understand, you've got to understand the value of a woman in those days was determined by how many kids they had. I'm talking to some Elizabeth this morning. I'm talking to some Elizabeth this morning, a male Elizabeth and a female Elizabeth who is saying, I wanted this. It didn't happen. I wanted this so badly and God knew that. It didn't happen. Could it be? The words that are coming from Elizabeth, let them encourage you. Even when the odds are against you, keep on believing. Amen. Say this with me. I'll keep on trusting him. Even when the odds are against me. Amen. Elizabeth, as she goes, we then meet with another young lady. Because Elizabeth represents all those that have gone past middle age as mothers, married but deficient, married but no fruit. There is a girl that will walk in in the first Christmas. She's smart, she's cool. As you know, young girls, what they do. I think this one actually would be very, very easy because I think what this one would do, she would just come up here and... Uh, her name is Mary. And Mary would say, Good morning, Destiny! Good morning, Destiny! Mary would say, my case was complicated. 
because as a young girl, all I remember, I was planning for my wedding. And you know, you can't get in place of a girl who's already thinking about the wedding. I can talk about that because as a marriage officer, every time when I see them coming and they're holding hands, they're holding hands. You should see them when they come to my house and they're about to get married. The boy and the girl. They're almost like sitting on top of each lap. It's like, it's like, it's like I give them the whole couch. <laughs> right? Yes, Mary. <laughs> And, and you, you'll be shocked what you see. They're so close, tightly together, like, we don't even want you, marriage officer, to come in between. We are so connected. By that time, when I'm telling them the difference between honeymoon and the home, honey, you take it to the moon. But when the honeymoon comes back from the moon into the house, there'll be personalities. Hey! What began like, you, you are my KFC, you are my Nando's, you are my chocolate. Oh, no, no, not just chocolate. You are my hazel dark chocolate. Ah, ah, ah. I will love you from earth and back to the moon because you are my whole world. When that happens, and they begin to tell them that, uh-uh, those accolades are good. But when you come to the house and there's a personality clashes that begin to develop, it might become very tight and the fellowship becomes very intense. You need to know how to handle yourself. Because that honey that kept you on the moon might not be able to hold it. I can tell you that right now. Like I often say to people that sex is not the glue. No. No. It is understanding the principles that hold the marriage together. Because wedding is for a day. Marriage is for a lifetime. Mary, Mary would say to you, I'd made all the cards and everything was set up and we had already engaged and I was just waiting for the day. But God interrupted me. Like, not Joe, my boyfriend. God interrupted me. I woke up one morning, this stomach was... <laughs> and now I'm thinking... How do I explain to my mom? Because my mom has invited all your friends and their cousins and relatives and they're all coming without even consulting me and they're all coming from all over the world for that big day. I try to tie with a belt so that it's tight enough. But you know, there comes a time you cannot, you cannot control that thing when it's inside there. <laughs> it started growing and I said, you know what? I'm just going to say it. First, I was thinking, how do I tell Joe? Second, I was thinking, my grandmom. I promised my grandma I'll be married to a virgin. Now, but she makes a decision profoundly to carry it anywhere. So if Mary was here, Mary would say, with all your dreams, with all your high hopes, with all you're planning for, a beautiful, successful life, planning honeymoon, we're going to Hawaii. God can interrupt that. And when God interrupts that, all what was planned can go peer shaped. But he will be saying to you and I, choose to trust his word above your plans. Amen. That's what Mary would say. Choose to trust him. Trust his word above your fears. Because when you read that text, it says, she was afraid. She asked questions. How shall this be? And the angel said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. I can imagine she's saying, no, 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 no. I don't want this. But she learned in the first Christmas, if I trust him by giving him myself to be a blessing for others, that's the thing that we don't want. See, we're living in a very selfish world. You know what? Selfish. 
in the selfish world, you think about me, myself, and I. But you see, God blesses you so that you can become a blessing. And I want you to see right now, because as the year is ending, ask yourself, who have you been a blessing to? Why are you classifying people? Why do you love others and don't prefer others? I love Mary, because if Mary had not said yes, I don't even know how this program of Christmas would have come. She said, yes, come in, Lord Jesus. She carried the savior, not of Perth, of the world. Give a big hand to Mary. Mm. But as I pray, as I pray, I want to pray with another category. We started with Elizabeth, who represented all the mothers, and we went to Mary, who represented all the girls that are here. But I think that let's end up with another old lady, and her name is Anna. Chapter 2, the book of Luke, verse 36. Hear what the Bible says there. Luke 2 and verse 36. And I want us to read all of us right now as I dismiss you. Chapter 2 and verse 36. Let's read all of us together. One, two, go. Now... She was of a great age, had lived. You see, it's always important you watch what the Bible is saying because everything in that text there is important for you. She lived with her husband seven years. I teach in my marriage seminars that seven years is what it takes for you to start knowing one another. Not one year, not two years, not three years. Seven years is what it takes for you to know each other. It's a rarity when you find people knowing one another in three years level. But it is commonly believed at the, at the year seven, you are just beginning to cool knowing one another. Oh, no, I know. He doesn't like that. Oh, now I know. He likes his food this way. Oh, I know. She, she prefers it that way. Oh, yeah. You know one another around that time. You click quite well. But listen to this. At the seventh year, when she's supposed now to be saying, Woo, finally. <laughs> he knows me and I know him. The husband died. <coughs> the husband died. Now, she could have been bitter. She could have been resentful. Anna could have been so bitter that she wouldn't want to go back to church again. She was a prophetess. She loved God. But here's what maturity you learn from Anna. Anna would say a statement that I believe can keep you in this Christmas. Anna would say to you and I, even though my husband died and he was of seven years, here is what kept me. Next verse, 37. Let's read together. And this woman was a widow. Oh, come on. How are you doing about that? How are you doing about that? Because some of us, uh, we don't get our bicycle already. We're not going to church already. If we, if we don't get just the little thing, the little thing, the little thing. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to church anymore because, you know, I'm upset. And then, then, the, yeah, 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 yeah. This woman has a lifelong heartache. Lifelong. She's bitter. She's sorrowful. She goes to the temple. She sees others with their husbands. She sees them holding each other's hand. What could have been is no more. But yes, the Bible says, a widow of 84 years. What is the next verse? Who to go? Who? Come on, you don't get back where you were. Who? Do oh, I love Anna? Because you fast because you want a job. You fast because you want the interview to go well. You fast 
because you want that blessing. Oh, no, I need to, I need to get this. I, I did not even eat today because I need to get this job. Josh, you got to understand. Please pray for me. Anoint me with oil. Did you, did you do properly? Anoint my hair, my forehead. Anoint my ears as well. Anoint my hands. Anoint my feet. I must get this job. I get that. But Anna, she was inconvenienced. Seven years of marriage, the husband gone. When the husband is gone, here's what I love. She did not depart from the temple. You hear that? There is a resilience and the tenacity that says, I will go to the house of God. Not because I've got it. Not because he has blessed me. Not because I have everything that I like. I will go to the house of God because if men cannot help me, only God can help me. Yeah, that's right. Give God a big hand of praise. Come on. Praise. At the end, therefore, of the year 2020, I want to encourage the Elizabeth, the Marys, and the Annas that she did not depart from the temple, but served God with the fastings and prayers night and day. And she died a widow. Her motivation became one. I should not die until I see the Redeemer coming. Until Mary and Joseph brought Jesus in the temple. She saw that. And then she died. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, if Anna was here today, I believe Anna would say a simple statement to all of us, survivors of the pandemic in 2020, as you celebrate your Christmas with your loved ones and your family in the coming weeks, you'll be saying, she'll be saying to you and I, sometimes what you love the most will be taken away from you. But even though it's taken away from you, still trust him. She led as an example before us that there is something about trusting God when what I love has been removed away from me. I want us right now to just come before God in prayer. And I want you to think reflectively as we close this service. There might be an Elizabeth here today. There might be a merry moment here today. There might be somebody going through an Anna situation here today. To those who are here that are going through the Elizabeth moment, here's the word of the Lord for you. Against all odds, choose to trust him. God's delays are not God's denials. That the best of my moments sometimes I find myself in between. In between my situation and my miracle. In between my problem and my answer. I find myself in my in between. In the middle. Caught up not knowing. Do I go back? Do I move forward? What do I do? Here are the words of Elizabeth. Choose to trust God despite. Speaking to a Mary that is here today, maybe your situation is like Mary. You were young, you're ambitious, got your dreams, sorted out. But God interrupts my plans. And it seems as if all that which I lived for, I dreamed about, is not going to work for my life. Mary says to you and I, choose to trust his word. Even though the future looks black.
and Anna will be saying to somebody here today that be in the situation. Pastor Josh, the most important thing in my life has been taken away and removed from me. Become so painful that I can't even pray. I find it difficult for me to go before God and pray anymore. I am bitter. I am resentful. I'm asking questions. But why? Take this cue from Anna. When what you love, when what is your dream, is taken away from you, choose to trust him anyway. Into your hands I, I commit it again with all I am for you It's your call. Jesus, I belong. It's your call this morning. It's your call. To you. You're the reason that I live. The reason that I see. With all I am. Sing it again, Inonga. Into your hands. of the living God is already moving here. Before I dismiss you, you go home. I don't want you to miss the moment when God is actually doing something in you. In these moments, if you're not careful, you can block your heart and miss what God is doing. If you're not careful in this moment, you can say that word was for her, not for me today. Oh, I wish she was here. I wish that brother was here. He needed that so badly. Avoid that this moment. Take it in. An Elizabeth situation doesn't understand why God is delaying the miracle. A Mary situation doesn't understand why 
when everything was going smooth and it seems as if God has interrupted my program. An honor situation doesn't understand why the things that I value and love are taken away from me. But all of them would leave this morning by telling you, choose to trust God anywhere. I'm going to invite you quietly in the presence of the living God. Just stand on your feet all over this building right now. And I want you just to focus on that. Focus on you right now. Focus on yourself. Somebody is going through a Mary moment. Somebody going through an Elizabeth moment. Somebody going through even an Anna moment. Whatever you are, wherever you are. It could be in your relationship. It could be with your children, your child, your daughter, your son. It could be with your spouse, with your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. It could be with your finances. It could be to do with your job situation. Whatever it is. This Christmas... Join Elizabeth, Mary, and Anna and say, you know what? I've made up my mind. I don't get it, but I will trust you. I don't understand it, but I will trust you. I don't know how, but I will trust you. Let's see it once more again. Jesus, I believe you. Go ahead. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. The reason that I see. Jesus, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong. mind, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands to God. Lifting up your hands, it's surrender. Lifting up your hands, you are saying, I give it to you. I give my life to you. I give my future to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have seen 2020. We are coming up in a few days, 2021. We don't even know what's going to happen. The systems around us are broken. The world around us is broken. Politics is broken. Best of the nations are broken. Your life is not held by China. Your life is not held by America. Your life is held by God. And I want you, thus, therefore, to trust him. The next few days, don't live in fear. I want you to trust God with your life. Say this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, choose to trust you, I choose to trust you. Even when the odds are against me. Say so it one more time. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I will choose to trust you. When I don't understand. Lastly, I choose to trust you when what I love is removed away from me. You are my everything. You are my joy. You are my life. You are my victory. I trust in you. Why don't you give God a big hand of praise and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you and we glorify your name. Praise God. Father, that's my prayer for this group. My prayer is you know where they are. You know what they're going through. You understand what's happening, what's not happening. There are many here that are even daring, wondering what's going to happen on the Christmas day, on the family lunch, because they know that cousin, they know that nephew, they know that brother is visiting, and they know it wasn't nice and palatable last year. And But Lord, I want to thank you. We choose to trust you. Father, we choose to walk with you. Father, we choose to put our life in your hands. Lord, as the prophet of the house, I bless them. I bless their families. I bless their children. I bless their spouses. I bless the work of their hands. I bless, oh God, their dreams. I bless the things that they have not yet received. I pray that none of these will give up on the way. None of these will throw in the towel. None of these will give up on God. But Lord, they will hold on up to the end. 
knowing very well that God you have begun a good work in their lives and that God you're going to bring it to completion. I declare the hand of God that what God has begun, no man can frustrate the plans of God. I pray for them now in Jesus' mighty name. May they march out today encouraged victoriously, knowing very well that the Lord God Almighty goes before them. I give you honor and I give you praise. Let them march victoriously because God Almighty is the King of kings and is the Lord of lords. He's Lord over their sorrows. He's Lord over their worries. He's Lord over their anxieties. He's Lord over their pains. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare they can do all things through Christ that strengthens them. If you agree with me once again, give him another beginner praise in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.